Welcome to the How to Scale Commercial Real Estate Show. Whether you are an active or passive investor, we'll teach you how to scale your real estate investing business into something big. Hey, Adam, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks, Sam. Appreciate you having me on. Man, this is great. This is great. I know you're a busy guy. Uh, and, you know, certainly appreciate you taking the time uh, to jump on here with us. You know, the same questions I ask everybody who comes on is where'd you start? Where are you now? And how did you get there? All right. That's a good one. Uh, where I started was uh, as a W-2 worker, putting my money into a 401k like you're supposed to right. and having no idea that anyone but the ultra wealthy could invest in things like apartment buildings. Um, and, and then one day a friend, uh, and I were talking and I was just kind of expressing my desire to one day own my own business or do something bigger, uh, and just wasn't really sure what that would look like. And, and she said, have you read rich dad, poor dad, <laughs> but you've never heard this on the no, show. <laughs> uh -uh. First one. <laughs> so it changed my life. And, sure. uh, you know, over, a a process of education, a journey of diving in to figuring out what this meant for me. I discovered real estate was the, was the asset for me. Mm. And then I just started by investing in some rentals. And, and then uh, I started to work on my mindset and I started to learn more of the idea of an abundance mindset and more how the wealthy think. And I began to realize that this, this was a possibility for me and I wow. could grow into something bigger. And I discovered commercial apartment investing. How, what was that process like to discover it versus I'm now actively investing in it? There's yeah. steps between those. Right. Yeah. I mean, it was, it was a long process. It, it was a, a very educational process for me, you know, so I started by getting my hands on as much material as I could and mm. reading and, and learning. And then I eventually went to a, a conference and I went to other meetups where I can meet people and, and learn from them. And all of this time I was trying to prepare myself mentally to be able to do this. I was trying to uh, ensure that I mentally believed in myself that I could do this. Uh, so that was part of the education as well. I mean, the technical details, most people can learn that thing, right? But it's that mental hurdle that you need to get over, those internal barriers that you need to break through. So I was spending time educating myself on both of those things. And it took, um, probably a year and a half, maybe a year uh, to go from the point where I just learned about this to a point where I'm actively looking for my first deals. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right Now, when you, when you say actively looking for your first deal, was that to be a passive investor or an active investor? Uh, active investor. Okay. Yeah, I, I was looking to be an active investor. Now I work a W-2. I work a day job. You still do? And, I still do. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. And anyone who invests in apartment buildings knows you cannot do that by yourself anyway. Sure. Which fits really well with me because I love working with teams. Mm. Uh, you know, some people like to work that way. Others don't. I'm one who thrives when you put me with a team. Hmm. When I'm all by myself, I don't like it so much. Right. So maybe, maybe we can direct this conversation then towards what this apartment, what apartment investing looks like for you as a team sport. Yeah, absolutely. So the first thing I had to do was decide uh, who can kind of fill in areas where I'm weak. How can I meet people who are strong where I'm not? And let's put a team together that the, you know, the team itself is going to be much greater than any of us could be by ourselves because we're all playing to our strengths. So that's kind of the first piece. And once we got that in place, then the sky's the limit because I went from looking at 12 to 20 unit deals, which is where I thought I was going to play to looking for over a hundred unit deals and mm. looking for 200 unit deals. And now mm -hmm. we're looking for even bigger ones than that. So I wouldn't, be able to think like that 
if I didn't have the right team around me. Right, right. So, you know, aside, aside from, you know, being the guy on the street with a sign that says I'm building a real estate team, like how, how did you go about doing that? <laughs> yeah. Um, networking and just meeting people and before COVID going to in-person events right. was very, very beneficial. So I began to do that. Um, starting the podcast helped a ton. I co-host the Tech Guys Who Invest podcast. Mm -hmm. I, I've met a lot of really fantastic people and that builds your network. And, and it's really about putting your message out there and letting people know what your goals are and what you're trying to achieve. And that kind of attracts the right people to you. And then eventually, you know, you'll kind of, continue to refine that and narrow it down to the people that become those that you connect with. Right. And the team that you built for your first deal, is that the still the same core members that you're working with now? Yeah, it is. And it's funny because it it's not, it didn't actually play out that way. Although that is how I set out to make it play out. Mm -hmm. But you know, like, like anything in life, it, it never really happens exactly the way you think it will. Sure. Right. So I kind of got adopted into a team. Oh, wow. Okay. That's cool. <laughs> I met a person, his name's Nick. I met Nick through the, the means I just mentioned, like we met at a, a local meetup. Uh, and then Nick ended up partnering with a guy named Viano. And these two guys started Dreamstone Investments where I'm cur currently partnered. And as they started to grow Dreamstone, me and Nick had already started to develop a, a relationship. Nick introduced me to Viano. Mm. And now the three of us began a relationship. And then one day Nick called me and said, Hey, you know, we've got this deal we're syndicating and we'd really like you to, to be on the team. Uh, I was going to help raise capital. I was going to handle investor relations and just kind of fill in and play in some areas where I'm strong. And that's, how this started. Right. And then after doing a, a couple of deals together, we started talking and I said, guys, you know, I, I was out to do this on my own and kind of build, build my team as you're doing right now. But I feel like I found my team. Why would I go pick new people? Like we already know we work well together. Right. And we've demonstrated it a few times. And they said, we feel the same way. You know, you would be a great contribution to the team. So why don't you join us? And the rest is history. Here I am. That's really cool. So what, give us a breakdown on what your acquisitions to this point have been. Yeah. So the first one that we syndicated as a group was a, a 59 unit in Tampa. And then after that, we syndicated a, a 56 unit in Tampa. Uh, and then after that, we Let's see. Let me think. The next one was a 90 unit in Tampa uh, and then a um, 100 unit in Atlanta. We just closed a, a 19 unit build to rent property in Nashville where we built townhomes, 19 mm -hmm. of them from from dirt and kept them so we will rent them out and we'll hold right. them and treat it very much like a syndication where we hold them for five to seven years and then and then um let it go uh and and you know we continue to grow like right now we're under contract on 176 unit in alabama uh can't really say too much more than that about it right now because we're still in due diligence but sure. um we're, we're looking at above 200 unit deals now and just continuing to grow. Right. That's fantastic. What are some of the um, lessons you've learned along the way? That's a great question. Uh, for me, the mental ones that I mentioned are big. I, I really am a big mindset guy because I have come to prove to myself that indeed you can achieve anything you put your mind to. Mm-hmm. But saying that is pretty easy. Uh, you've got these internal fears and those little saboteurs in your mind that say, you know, you're not good enough for that. Or, ooh, you've tried something like that before and it didn't work. Or you've even got people in your life who may be saying those things to you and they don't want to see you grow. And, right. uh, you know, um, 
not because they don't like you or because they're mean or because they're bad people, but you know, it's uncomfortable for them. If, if you, you grow massively and, and start to change and things. So there are all these kind of forces against you that you have to sort of break through, but you can do it. And if you put your mind to it, you can achieve anything. Uh, so, you know, that's a huge lesson that I, that I've truly learned right there. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Are there, are there routines that you go through like morning routines? Are there the, you know, quiet time? Like how do you reinforce those mindset shifts that you wanted in yourself? Yeah, that's great. A great question, Sam. So I do the savers morning routine. I don't mm-hmm. know. Maybe you've heard of that one. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tell the how, miracle how morning, right? That's it. Yeah, huh? that's it. I love it. I do that almost every morning, right? I'm pretty consistent with that. Um, and, and I notice when I don't do that, I do start to kind of feel a little less motivated and I'll kind right. of get a little sidetracked, snap back into it. And, and, um, and I'm right back on track. So that's a big one. Uh, and then an intentional, um, an intentional move to professionally, personally continue to grow, like, mm. you know, um, investing in my growth, investing in myself. And an example of that is, uh, a, get a coach, jo- join a mastermind, mm-hmm. you know, those types of things. And I, I do those things as well, just to continue to grow and continue that, that focus. Right, right. No, that that's fantastic. So it sounds like a lot of your success, just to reiterate, has been a uh, mindset shift more into the I am capable of. And then of course, also finding mentors and coaches along the way you know, to kind of help fill in the weak spots. Investing in yourself is, is, you know, I used to look at the, at the coaching kind of like a broke person does, you know, with that scarcity mentality, like I was looking at the cost. Wow. That's expensive. Sure. But now I look at that as it's an investment and it pay, you, you can't even quantify how much it pays for itself. The first coach I had uh, was the one who inspired me to start the podcast. Mm. I, I mean, he, the, the price I paid him for his coaching program w- has paid for itself many times over. You know? That's awesome. Yeah. His name is Tyler chef. He's a, he's a really good coach. That's awesome. Have you, uh, you ever hired any coaches that you wish you hadn't? No, I have not been in that situation. Okay. Thankfully. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. No, that's great. I mean, you know, you, 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 you learn, uh, learn from both doing right and doing it the wrong way. So, yeah, no you know, kidding. that's awesome. That's awesome. Cool. So you guys, uh, you know, you started building out your, uh, what year did you begin this? Like when I was your first in, project? I began in 06. Okay. And I, I'm sorry. I, I wish 16. I, I began in 2016. Okay. Um, and then I bought my first rental house within a year of that. Right. Uh, and then, you know, the first, um, the first large multifamily though was, uh, let's see, 2017, end of 2017. Right. No. And you guys are moving right along. I mean, that's, Mm -hmm. that, that's pretty great progress. Is there ever a consideration for you to step out of your W two full time job and go all real estate. Yeah, that's the question I battle with all the time. Uh, I love my day job. Oh, and well, there you it, go. You know, I mean, not everybody can say that. Sure. Um, but at some point, I think it's going to be costing me so much. It's going to be <laughs> a tough decision. I'm going to have to come come to terms with. Yeah, that's an interesting point. You know, things that that most people in their day jobs can't say is, well, it costs me so much to go to work. Right. (laughs) Multifamily investors can say that. (laughs) (laughs) I I swear I've never heard that before. Like, well, I would go to work, but it costs me too much. (laughs) Yeah. It's like, I really like it, but it's just too expensive. (laughs) (laughs) That's awesome. That is, yeah, I think that's the quote of the week. That's fantastic. What a good place to be in though. I mean, for somebody to, yeah, blast and also to, you know, dream something up, say we can do this and then actually get there and say, Oh, okay. Well, this, this is what that life looks like that I had imagined. 
What are some hurdles or some things that you guys are facing in your business right now? Either, you know, I guess I'll just leave the question open-ended, but that you guys are facing right now that you are attempting to overcome. Well, one that comes to mind immediately is the uh, deal flow. I mean, we, well, we've got okay deal flow, but finding deals that actually work and are profitable it mm-hmm. is challenging. I mean, we we continue to churn through a ton of deals and underwrite many, many deals and, and, you know, you, you find them eventually, but uh, I mean, that's a challenge and maybe that's always a challenge. You know, if you talk to somebody who's been doing this for 15 years, maybe they would say, yep, it's just always going to be that way. And that's fine. So it's not um, blocking us, but it is one thing that's preventing us from going as fast as we would like to go. You know, sure. if we could find deals a little faster. And then I guess another one uh, related to that would also be raising capital, mm. you know, and, and those two things are probably always challenges in the business. Um, we, we are continuing to grow. We want to go after bigger and bigger deals. Um, to do that, you know, you have to increase your capital raising skills and resources Etc. You can't syndicate a deal with with friends and family chipping in fifty grand at a time if you're going after a twenty million dollar deal, right? Right. I mean, it, it starts to get tough. So, so we're working through that right now. Um, yeah, those are those are a couple of the big ones. Right. Right. Yeah. Capital raising is is obviously always on um, every real estate investor's mind. I think um, yeah, just absolutely. because. Yeah, it's one of those things that we it, it's, it's kind of the kind of the air to our uh, to our deals. What uh, how do you guys foresee, you know, what are some that's some some next steps you're taking in order to increase the amount of capital that you guys can raise? Well, Sam, one cool thing is I'm sure, you know, after you've been at it for a while, you know, it, the hard work you've done to build the foundation does start to pay off. You right. Know? I mean, so all of the people you're talking to and the people you're educating and the work you're putting in to attract people to you does start to pay off and they start to come and, and relationships that you start to build begin to um, get stronger. And then, you know, you, you develop new relationships off of those. And so your network increases and, and all of that helps a lot. So just continuing to stick with that. Uh, But also, I mean, we've been talking to uh, like, We've been starting to talk to bigger players, uh, such as some private equity, a family office, and, and things like that. So that that's what we're doing right now to kind of help with that. Right, right. And I would imagine, you know, out of the gate, it would be tough to get in front of a PE firm or in front of a front of a family office and say, "Hey, I have no track record whatsoever. Uh, don't you guys want to throw ten million dollars at a time and do a deal with me?" Right. But for you guys, now you've developed that history of profitable projects. Yeah. And we're developing a good relation, uh, sorry, a good reputation along mm-hmm. the way. You know, we're mm-hmm. working really hard to do that and make sure that we've got a, a great reputation in the industry and people know who we are. So when those folks talk to us, when they talk to our references, when they talk to people that we have done business with, they're going to get a, a really good story and that right. will help. Right. Have you seen any, and we're going to get into the weeds here slightly. I don't, don't want to, don't want to wear anybody out on the, on two granular discussions, but have you seen when you've talked to these larger equity sources, have you seen the terms of what they want in a deal change versus your average syndication? So the, what they're asking for, it yeah. Do they, do they want a bigger piece of the pie? Do they yeah. want, you know, preferential treatment in ways that, you know, maybe I don't, I don't know. I'm, I'm just talking here. I don't, I don't know. Cause I've not had these conversations myself yet. So I'm asking. Yeah. Interesting. And it's funny because I'll, I'll answer that and then I'll, I'll share something else with you that you may find interesting. So mm-hmm. in yes, they, they do want a bigger piece of the pie. And we see that as, a part of our strategy, you know, the same way you may let more people into your first deal than you want to, but you, you, you know, you need to take those people who may not have the $50,000 minimum you prefer to 
have people and take a few of the twenty thousand dollar investors and get more people into the deal, knowing that that may not be your preference, but it. It's what it takes to get that deal done. Uh, it's kind of like that, right? We may have to pay our dues up front and mm. and pay a little more to get these folks in to partner with us. And then eventually we won't need them like that, right? right. We'll have our own resources. Right. Um, the interesting thing that I was going to tell you about is this is an example of how our team plays to our strengths. So I'm not really the one in there talking to those guys. Mm. It's Viano because he's our finance guy and he is brilliant with numbers. He holds them in his head. He can spit them out and talk fine details to these guys all day long. He loves it. And he just speaks their language. And he is, he's the perfect CEO, financial minded guy that you would want in there doing that role. And then me, on the other hand, um, you wouldn't want me in there talking to those guys about this stuff. I would have, to, <laughs> I don't hold numbers in my head. I, I would be referring to my notes all the time and they would probably be like, what the heck? <laughs> That's awesome. So it's another example of how our team kind of plays to our strengths. And, um, Viano's the one in there talking to those guys. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, that, that, yeah, you're absolutely right. Yeah. You can't, uh, you can't uh, do the things that you're not good at, no matter how hard you may want to. So that's, uh, yeah, that's absolutely awesome. Adam, let's jump here into the final four if we can. Sure. If you were to distill everything you know down to one piece of advice, what would that one piece of advice be? Oh, man, that's a good one. Uh, I would say never give up. Mm. The, the one piece of advice would be when you set your mind to it, go for it and just don't give up. Keep at it. The only I love people that. who fail are those who just stop trying too early. Right, right. No, that's absolutely true. I love that. When it comes to investing in yourself, what's um, one thing you're doing to stay on top of your game? Um, getting a coach. I just recently got a new one. And uh, yeah, his name's Tyler Tyler Chesser and, and Trevor McGregor. I'm actually in a group with those two guys and it's fantastic. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. I've heard of, heard of Tyler or uh, Trevor, of course, uh, yeah. not heard, not heard of the other gentleman, but that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. Well done. That's great. When it comes to giving back, what's one thing you're doing to make the world a better place? Ooh, I love that one. Um, I would say immediately the podcast helps because we're educating people financially and our target persona are people who are working a day job, you know, they haven't been formally financially educated, they're just throwing their money into a 401k. So they don't really know that you can take control of your financial freedom mm. and continue to grow. Mm -hmm. um, but also, you know, I love to take my girls and, and I have two daughters that uh, volunteer with and I'm just kind of teaching them to uh to give back and that not everybody's as fortunate as us so one way we like to give back is here in tampa there's something called metro ministries metropolitan ministries is a it's like a homeless shelter and it helps people get back on their feet and uh, we like to volunteer there right oh that's that's awesome good for you guys adam if our listeners want to get in touch with you what's the best way to do that uh good question all right so there are a few ways you can get in touch with me you can email me directly adam at dreamstoneinvest.com. Uh, you can check me out on my podcast website. That's tgwipodcast.com. Or you can check me out on social media. I'm on LinkedIn most. If you link in with me, just tell me you heard me on this show. It helps me know who you are, why you're linking in with me. And, um, and then I can let Sam know too. <laughs> That's awesome. Adam, thank you so much for your time today. I certainly appreciate it. Yeah, thanks a lot. I had a blast being here. Thanks so much for having me on. Thank you.